Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here with Cinema Sound. Today we're going to continue with how to make scores sound great in the box for motion pictures, etc. Today we're going to be looking at harp and why it's the million dollar instrument. It turns regular old sounds and whatever into sounding like you spent a million dollars on your score. Let's show you how. We're here in Logic Pro uh, with a basic large orchestra cue that I did for a piece, uh, a pilot I did a long time ago. Let's just take a listen to it here. There's some harp in here already, but not in this particular section. Check it out and get used to kind of get a feel for it. Cool. Now we're gonna, this harp is, this harp part's already in here at the end and you can kind of feel what it does. Let's take a listen just by itself. So it's a big gliss. And we're using right now the Spitfire guitar, oh, guitar, that's great. The Spitfire harp, which is one of the nicest harps around. I'm not still 100% happy with it, uh, but it definitely works and we're able to make it work. I never use the built-in glisses because as you'll see in a moment, being able to program your own glisses is far better than anything that's pre-programmed, even if it's time-based. Now it requires you to understand how a harp works. And I invite you to take a look at any orchestration book to know how the pedals on a harp work. But it basically, if you know anything about a harp, it means, let me just pull this up here uh, once again so you can see the keyboard down here. So on a regular harp, a concert harp, you have seven strings per octave. And then it repeats. And how you have the pedals on the bottom of the harp determine how you get the other notes. Whatever. Um, and so you can't do this. You can't do 12 notes. You only get seven, and you have to pick which way they go. And the way I like to think about it is that each one of these white notes can go either up one step or down one step. So this note could go to E. This note could go to F sharp. Um, this note could go to A flat. This note could go to B, uh, A sharp, which means you can already see the math. Sometimes you'll be doubling up notes, which is what makes the harp sound unique to any other instrument. And I'll show you that in a moment. In fact, let's just do that right now. So... I'm going to leave this over here. I'm going to push solo. Um, and what I like to do to make a gliss is use the white notes because there's always uh, seven notes per octave. And that way I can also control the velocity and how the, the curve goes of how hard, you know, because when you pull the harp strings, it doesn't just go the same all the way up. It's, it's harder at the beginning of the pull, lesser in the middle, and harder as, the, as your arm comes up like this. So it's blah, blah, it's almost always that way. So we want to be able to go boom and come out at the end like that. Um, and then uh, we can't really do that and figure out what notes we want. You can't really gliss and do black notes at the same time. It's impossible. So we're going to just do the performance of the strings, even though it's going to be completely out of tune or out of pitch or out of harmony with the white notes. And then in logic, we're going to be able to go back very quickly and change the notes into what we want them to be. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to hold down the sustain pedal. Um, which kind of simulates, you can see I'm holding down 64, uh, which is the MIDI channel number or MIDI controller number for uh, the sustain. And that kind of simulates that the strings are going to ring. And on this sample in particular, if I hold the pedal down and go, and then pick it up, you can hear her damp, her, her the harp player. Could have been Harpo Marks, could have been him. But let's check this out. I'm going to go into record and just do a little gliss. All right, now let's take a look at what we've created on the piano roll notator. Let's get rid of this. There's all the velocity, which I can also control if I wanted to. But for now, let's just bring this down so we can take a look more at the notes. Here I've started. And let's say I wanted a C gliss, which this is. Well, in a C gliss, this F doesn't sound that great. So what we want to do is hit the, uh, let's see here, let's zoom in so you can see the whole thing. We're going to select this F, maybe not that far, F right there. We're going to say select everything that's an F, you can see them highlight, and then we're going to hold down my key command for moving everything down a half step. 
Now I have two E's in a row. I've flatted that F, just as if she'd moved one of those pedals to flat. Hard to hear with the selection. The next one we want to fix is this B. There's the C, but that B really doesn't fit in. So we're going to do the same thing, select all the Bs and move them up to duplicate the C. Now, why do we go to the C? Well, because we can only go up one or down one. And if we went down one, we go to B flat, which might be interesting, but not right. Basically be a C7 chord. But if we go up to the C, it's a beautiful C glisp. Now, none of this is what we really want here because we want to be able to focus on um, fitting into what the harmony is here, which let's take a listen. Here. So we're kind of in a, in a G. Kind of a weird Locrian kind of mix mode. So what we're going to do is do full folding glisses, which you can't ever really find in any kind of library. And we're going to perform it ourselves and then link it up with the glisses that happen. I'm losing my mind here, right here. So on that trombone. That's where we're going to start. Here we go. We're going to hold down sustain. And then it'll lock into that one. Now, by itself, this sounds like crap, I promise you. It's just a bunch of C nonsense glisses, but we want to be able to change this. We want to get rid of that little mistake there, too. Same with that one. And that one. So we want to change this to that C low cream. Well, what was that? Well, that made that what I was doing was A flat. So let's find our first A. There's our A. Select all the A's, go down a half step. And that C can actually come down to B to double that. So we have E needs to come to E flat. E, 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 E. There's our E to E flat. F needs to go to F sharp. And now it's a weird gliss. Let's see how it sounds. Pretty legit. Let's add it with everything else, see if we lined it up. We lined it up with the other harp glyphs. Now, what I really want you to see, that's kind of a little thing on how to do harp glyphs. But if I take this out, notice how this feels. And then if we add the woo, if we add the harps back in. All of a sudden, it feels like you added a million dollars to your score just because of that simple 30-second harp gliss that you performed, didn't rely on a library pre-made gliss or anything like this, and all of a sudden, your score sounds super legit. Again, I encourage you to go look at how harp pedals work. It's not that hard. Any of your white notes can go up a note or down a note, and then just move all of your white note glisses to suit and then you'll be in great shape. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and especially in creating million dollar value to your scores. Even if you're doing hip hop or whatever, adding a harp makes a big, big difference. If, it, if not stylistically, certainly in how it feels budgetarily. And if this has been of great value to you, why don't you please subscribe to our channel here. We have hundreds of videos here, wedding, wedding and waiting, wedding and rating ready and waiting for you to learn about how to get maximum value for your productions. And please come visit us at Cinema Sound, which is the hub where all these videos live, articles, um, groups, group therapy on how to get Hollywood level immersion into your productions for very little cost. And of course, we're the only uh, fully comprehensive education for uh, filmmakers to know how to go from, I don't know how to make audio work, I don't really understand it, all the way to professional level, Hollywood level deliveries in 5.1 and higher. Until then, until we see you at Cinema Sound, we'll see you in post. Even if you're for yourself.